Hi, uh, hello, and today we're talking about Horus. No, not not that Horus. No, not that Horus. Our additional manufacturer that isn't part of the Big Three. So, Big Three wise, you have the public IPSN, Smith Shimano, Harrison Armory. You're practical, you're fancy, and you're military. When it comes to Horus, it's uh. Yeah. Horus is the funky one. In more ways than just... that. But when comparing it to some of the other corporations, it's not a corporation. It's not a megacorp, it's not a small corporation, it's more... ad hoc? Spread throughout random files and no one really knowing any of their origins. Alright, so company-wise, the reason you don't talk about Horus is because you can't talk about Horus. Again, not in the sense of, like, union law, kind of. There, there might be that. It's in the sense that it's like talking about the Alpha Legion in 40k. You can never truly talk about the Alpha Legion. When a whole group shtick is being unknown, or not knowing their objective, or knowing who exactly is involved, you can't really talk about them. Which was the difficulty with this one. Though if you really like the Alpha Legion, honestly Horus as an organization isn't too far off the ball for you. Not to say it's bad in any sort of sense, faction-wise, it's really interesting, it's just not anything solid. You don't have this entire history or track record like we did with the IPSN video, talking about their origins back around Luna all the way to modern day with their own planet and system. No, with Horus it's, hey, we vaguely saw or maybe heard of them at this point or another. I mean, even within the book itself, there's conflicting reports on whether it arrived just a few hundred years ago, or whether it started all the way back with Ra's appearance. Some even think that maybe it is Ra, or they were the organization helping Ra form. It's really just all over the place. That's part of the charm. If you need a consistent, ominous, organized boogeyman, slightly organized boogeyman in the background, Horse is a good go-to. It really is. And not even necessarily in the direct negative sense, because its motivations are ambiguous, or conflicting, self-conflicting. And the fact that in part of those conflicting reports are even the organization's acts and decisions. They even contradict each other. So really, who knows? Not even members of Horus know. Though what is fun is some of the theories of what they are. Some theorize, namely the most popular one with some of the Union historians or classifications, is that it's something splintering off of Ra. Or Monist One, a sliver of it, or an NHP that got away from the original ones. That's the other thing. Well, we'll talk about Ra's appearance. Back from the intro to Lancer, Ra and stuff, if you remember, is the uh, I think, therefore I am into existence entity in blink space that appeared, said, humans, stop that. Bunch of different legal stuff to try and put a halt on transhumanism, specifically D-Corp, and then booked it. The stuff he left behind was a bunch of the different NHPs left in the technology that he kind of interfaced with. Whether it was on purpose, splinters of him, images of him that then began to adapt... Who knows? I mean, him's not even a proper word for it outside of, you know, using the word raw. But weird, extra-dimensional entity that just came in, said no, and left Eldritch Math behind. So of those slivers and those NHP, a lot of those original NHPs captured, put in caskets, and then sent towards a vault on the surface of Venus, which the pressure is still terrifying. Man, that would be such an awesome heist mission, by the way. Anywho, that's separate. Vault with NHPs on Venus. Horus dealt with that. So the theory is, some of them got away, or one of them got away, and founded Horus, founded in quotations, Though of the other theories, you have that Union might have made this as a honeypot to get Horizon sympathizers and any individual paracausal activists, not activists, rogue militant elements looking for paracausal tech. Horizon, by the way, is a movement within Union space of those saying that NHP should have rights. Some say AI should also have rights, and it's just an intelligence we don't recognize. They range wildly, and again, kind of like Albatross deserve their own little video covering them, but, you know, a bit of overlap. Some think it's a GMS skunk works, sending out random bits of blueprints to see what random field testing might bring up. You know, off the books sort of thing. Maybe it is a group of rogue NHPs that came together and are trying to just take down or free them from Union. Possibly it's just Omninet activists. Alien intelligence feeling itself through the Omninet and leaving bits of itself behind. Rogue NHP whose dreams are being interpreted by those members of Horus acting it out. Ripples of the last Egregorian Overmind that have just been rippling across the galaxy in the Omninet. Uh, Telepathic hive mind aliens of the one Xena side, second committee committed. 
Oh, Hersinia. Though the reason there's so many of these different conflicting interpretations, images, is because Horus is only known through its individual actors and acts. Which again, contradict each other and don't follow along the same lines. Running theme of, you don't know what's going on, even when it comes down to the function of their machines. Well, I mean, violence is definitely one of those for the chassis. Castigate, 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 castigate. When it comes to their tech as well, it's heavily paracausal and uses NHPs to an extent. But to further define paracausal, and what I mean by it's heavily using them or it's outlawed to an extent, it's not. The research is restricted and limited, but Union itself uses it in day-to-day -day stuff. NHPs for one, which is used in more things than just military equipment. And then Blink Gates, Blink Space itself, the OmniNet. All of those are technically paracausal. And in the sense that paracausal isn't breaking the laws of physics, it's going outside the laws of physics, creating its own logic, then coming back in. Essentially, the outcome is not uh, defined by our causality. Not So instead of going from A to B, it immediately goes from A to D, or A to Omega, and then it's just this whole other thing. So that's how you get and it's outside sad. of reality. And it's used a lot more often, it's just that Horus is notorious for it, particularly in the designs of their chassis. So starting off, as we're heading into the chassis, namely how you get them. No one knows. There's many rumors, there's many ideas, but usually it just randomly appears. Maybe it's for a test, maybe it's to call out to individual members, maybe it's attempts to recruit, or just field testing. Again, it's part of the reason there's so many contradictory things and no one knows what Horus is. One thing that is a regular thing, rebel and insurrectionist groups. Those two, those kind of areas and groups that are already outside of the law, usually get a lot of Horus prints. There's even some directly mentioned within the compendium. But you could just be printing your normal mech or microwave, and all of a sudden, it's a manticore. Well, actually, the, the microwave's probably a bit of extreme. But you know, it's Horus. And a lot of their designs look alien. <laughs> like, not designed by a person. Not blocky, not really divine for function. More weirdly animalistic bull... It's strange. Strange is the word for it. Otherworldly. But of those mechs, we've now finally get into them. Part of their designs as well are believed to be tied to metavolts, which are like pockets of paracausality, out of time, don't exist. Namely, horses associated with these because uh, parts of the goblin frame, which we're about to talk about, came from one, or at least were recognized in one. So maybe time travelers is also Horus. Lich does not clear that up any further. <laughs> So first off, naming theme-wise, fantasy monsters. So first we have the Baylor. So you might be noticing first that fire. That's not fire. It will burn you like it, but that's not fire. Well, it won't burn you like it. It's nanites. It'll just take you apart. It's really scary. It really is. It's not pleasant. Yeah, no, it's really scary. Ooh, another thing to go up because again, nanite swarm, it really could look like anything. And I mean anything, to the point that it's hard to tell if something's a Baylor until it begins acting like it with the Nanite Swarm. It could look like any number of these other mechs, and you would not know it's a Baylor until it worked. And while for the Baylor that's due to its Nanites, and the code that Horus provides, it also goes along for a lot of the other Horus mechs. Because while we have the fun art here of, like, uh, a different frame, Horus is defined in pattern groups that Union places on it. There's not a standard frame. Sure, with other frames as well, there's personalizations and variants that people can do, especially Lancers themselves customizing it. But when it comes to Horus, no one frame looks alike, even the official just flat standard Horus. Again, not a production. So all these other ones, the Baylor, Nanites, so it could look like anything already, but all these other ones, it's just the parts. And more in how it functions versus how it actually looks. But continuing on with the Baylor, outside of, you know, nanites, eating you, gray swarm, gray goo, hides as other mechs. It's a Baylor. It's got a big whip. It tears you apart, shreds you, heals at the end of its own round. It just consistently regenerates. It doesn't need to do anything or use any parts in a rest because it takes its parts. If you wanted to pilot a gray goo max, play the Baylor. Fun thing about its origins, or where it was initially identified and found, was dealing with a new hive mind entity from the Baylor virus. This thing's a virus. It doesn't actually really spread, it just kind of appears or takes over an already existing mech or license. Not in the sense of just code, but if you have some of the nanites, it might just convert your entire chassis. 
You better hope that it considers you the pilot. Next up, a good old fun classic, Goblin. If you want to be a jerk, if you want to annoy, if you want to control, if you want to be a hacker, it's the annoying Goblin. Though ironically, it does actually have some buff stats. It's all about the tech action, hacking, range, sensors, I mean, it's covered in antennae. And it's less of a frame, more of just a hard suit, also one of the first frames identified by Union about a few hundred years ago. No, a hundred? I mean, it's less of a frame or a chassis and more just a hard suit, or even just an exoskeleton. I mean, you could see the guy in it. And when it comes to the hacking, its controls just really have like a small individual keyboard. Not a literal keyboard, but you know. Of its fun abilities to share some of its stats, it can also just latch on to other mechs. Though it is extremely fragile, like a goblin, you can just swat it. Oh, goblin. Goblin. Next is the Gorgon. Gorgon for a few reasons. One, it does actually have a projector which can cause brain hemorrhaging if you don't have any visual protection, and also just static shock and glitches within digital systems witnessing it. Fun! And while that's also the case for freezing enemies in place with some of its other abilities as well, it is the defense, goalie, I will bodyguard all my allies and have every reaction imaginable, like a very scary guard dog. Also, that weird, like, visual pattern is considered paracausal tech, because Union has no idea how it's doing that, or where the pattern's coming from. Also because it entirely leaves its allies alone. Do you like drones? Do you really like drones? And I mean, really like drones. Well, you can play as drones, or that magnet guy from Revengeance. The entire thing, outside of its main cockpit, which is here, can come apart. Though again, Designs differ to the point that, even within its sheet, it's described as having potentially torn previous pilots apart when they didn't know it was installed. But you are playing as a drone swarm that's holding together as if it's one chassis. And you might get some similarities between this and the Baylor, which even the guide acknowledges, believing this to be a precursor. Also, the design and original blueprints and NHP on board for this one was stolen directly from Venus. Somehow. And then we have Cascade Enemies of the Godhead, Manticore! Noted for its spines, again, fantasy creature. Uh, I guess we forgot to talk about the Hydra on that one. Spines, spikes, electricity, damaging itself to get bonuses. It is a walking Tesla coil. <laughs> well, series of Tesla coils, actually. And not the best ones. Namely because in its description, when it's applied to other frames, it even mentions them melted after action. It's, uh, it's a lot of heat. A lot of shocking, a lot of moving, getting in close, electrocuting, energy AP damage, and castigate. <laughs> God, I keep trying to swing to that. And castigating enemies of the Godhead. This is the one frame that's built to self-destruct. As in, any of them can self-destruct. It's an action you can do. It does double damage when self-destructing. But specifically, you need to be inside it. No, uh, no getting out of this one. Minotaur! Slow down, you're in a maze, get out of here! What maze? It's not the one you find yourself in, but it is. In the sense that, uh, when it's described that they were opening up the Minotaur, it was impossible for all the internal parts to fit in. It's bigger on the inside. There's also no actual cockpit, you just kind of teleport into it, or somewhere. But this is all about slowing, having enemies travel somewhere, and even hurling them into a... metaphorical slightly causal paracausal maze hence the name also you know the horns if you want to screw with distance as in walking one foot is actually 10 miles or inverted it's the minotaur just screws with space time is messed with another and lastly of the core frames the gun does not exist pegasus the freak it's pegasus he has a gun that doesn't exist but it does, but it doesn't, but it doesn't. Though it is all about not existing, changing, existing at the same time, paradoxes. Uh, namely that you shop the gun on its back, just guarantees does one damage, just does. No roll to hit, it's a free action, not even taking one of your attacks, you're not actually firing it, it just does, it just hits, it just does damage. But then your other guns, like Mimic Gun itself, it's it's all about replicating, changing, being the right thing at the right time, and prediction. It has the Sisyphus NHP on board, which is all about knowing the happiest man alive. Or the happiest 
eldritch paracausal entity alive, I guess. Of course, it's all weird. Though we were just covering the core frames, there are the supplement ones. However, we're just touching on this for now. And before you go, did you know the Horus page is actually on 404?